In today's video, we're gonna take another look at one of the bottles that we've already featured on this channel, and that's the Bimba Spirit of the Underground releases. So here we are, welcome back to the channel everyone and we're very excited about this video because a few videos before we did a video about the concept of the Bimba Spirit of the Underground release and we're very fortunate today to have a cardboard box and we loved the concept of the Spirit of the Underground release so much that we decided, well why the hell not, it's 125 quid it's a great concept and we thought we would enter ourselves into trying to get ourselves a bottle. Now, I'm hoping that this is the Bimba bottle in here. I really do because otherwise we're going to be in for some trouble. Let's have a look to see what we've got. Yes, there we are. Nice recyclable packaging here. This is sort of taken over from the air sacs now for sort of like lower value bottles, which is good. Uh, and inside a polythene bag, here we have King's Cross St Pancreas. Hey, sorry about that people, I have no idea what happened in that first video, of course it's King's Cross St Pancras, and here we have it. So the bottle itself, well first impressions, what, I mean what really good packaging this is, I mean it's really eye catching, it's just a really nice piece of graphic design and you can kind of tell it's been done in conjunction with Transport for London because a lot of their graphic language obviously the, the you know the king's cross saint pancreas sign is here on the front but also some of the fonts and the way that it's used i think it looks really really attractive and if you see any of the photographs on social media where people have got a set of four of these they do actually work well as a series and yeah you might not be wanting to drink this bottle and it does display really nicely and i think for a release from a new distillery I can't think of many more attractive bottling series. I mean, yes, it's only in a basic tube. Oh, what have we got in here? NFC tag competition. Fantastic. Well, we'll have a look at that later. But it's, it's, it's really nicely presented. And, you know, you go back to some of the comments that we made in the first video about this, this bottle probably not going to be an ongoing series to cover all of the stations. And the reason for that is obvious, you know. There's graphic language on here that represents the stations and the platforms that they're, they're covering. And some of the tube stations on the outside of London in the, in the outside zones are probably not gonna have too much to write home about. But itself, you know, and again, another nice feature of this bottle, big slab of glass at the bottom of the bottle. You see this on the Red Collection, you see this on some of the other modern Macallan releases, and we are seeing it, more of this, I mean, it makes no difference. It's just a big chunk of glass at the bottom of the bottle, but it gives the bottle a nice sort of weighty feel about itself. So now we move on to sort of like the release of this bottle because the release itself was quite well organized, I think. It, it's got its own website. The whole bottling series in association with Bimba and Transport for London, they've made a really slick looking website that looks a bit like a Transport for London website. And okay, let's get the niggles out of the way first of all. The shop where you buy these when they're released, it's under the ticket office and it's like, uh, yeah, I get you trying to keep the language in line with the product in terms of the transport, the underground theme, but it wasn't that obvious to most people, or to me anyway, and I'm speaking for everybody because I'm on YouTube, but I just found it could have been a little bit clearer. But other than that, I think the release was handled pretty well. It was a timed entry. You got an email to say that when the bottles were going to be live on the site, I think it was about two o'clock. Uh, on a specific day you went onto the site at that time or just before and you were allocated a random position in the queue now we here we had three computers done and we all joined the queue at the same time and we were all allocated three different points in the queue so we just went to the one who was the closest at the top of the queue and you know within about 10 minutes we were on the site and Incidentally, I think a lot of other people had done that because the queue time went from an expedi you know, expected 30 minutes down to about 10 minutes within the matter of minutes. I think people were getting onto the site, buying their bottles and then logging out all of their computers because it was limited to one bottle per customer. So you couldn't order multiple releases in this. So if you wanted to do that, you would have to have got your nan and your friend and all sorts of people involved to get it. So it was limited to one bottle. We of course went for King's Cross St Pancras because 
as a smack in the head to tell me that it's not St Pancreas. But I think overall the release was really well organised, especially compared to other releases direct from distilleries the website didn't go down and things like that and they even had a follow-up ballot afterwards so once all the bottles had been allocated to the timed entry they then went to an email ballot So since the first video that we made, the first video was made before the release. Now this is a few weeks after the release, obviously now that we've got it in hand, there's been a number of these appear at auction and there's been around 20 appear at auction so far. And the average price of these, you know, let's remember this was released at 125 pounds a bottle. The average price of these has been 530 pounds. So about 300, 325% increase on that initial purchase price. Now that's only the average, I mean, the. Strangely enough, the first few bottles that appeared at auction got the lowest prices, about 350, 375. But recently, some have been going as high as 975 pounds, which is insane. But it's a point that we're gonna sort of come back to in a second about why that might be. And it's, it's just, you know, I do think that this price is gonna drop. I don't think the prices are gonna remain this high you know moving forward with all the releases obviously the first release is going to be the one that most people want as we talked about in the first first you know first video the first four stations that they chose were arguably the the, the greatest tourist destination so it have the greatest appeal to collectors but I think one of the things that I found quite ironic about this release is that Bimba released or you know restricted the purchase to one per customer but the nature of the release itself, releasing four at the same time as part of the same series, leads itself to collectors to want to get one, two, three, and four. So they've got the set. And yeah, my collecting instinct wants me to collect the set. So as a result, Bimba Transport for London, they've already created this secondary market demand at auction for these bottles, which again, it's just like another layer of brilliant marketing and i just think this is such a good series and such a good release and again i, I just absolutely love the concept of this series so yeah i do think prices are going to drop but so far at auction the prices have been very strong and probably will continue to be there's another nine or ten at the moment while we're filming this video that are live again some are up to 900 pounds or so so there's a really good chance that one of these bottles is going to push the thousand pound mark barrier which is pretty impressive for bimba releases really So I can't really make a second video without making a few corrections to the first video. Um, the obvious one being that they've obviously spelt St. Pancreas wrong on the, no, that's me, isn't it? No, it's St. Pancreas, not St. Pancreas. Uh, another thing, when we talked about the English whiskey regulations as well, we didn't mention that the, ris the, the English whiskey regulations, they, there's no, ge but the point that I was trying to make is that there's no geographic restriction as to where English whiskey can be made. You can get whiskey in Scotland, bring it into England and label it as English whiskey. And that is the problem, not on how you make it, who gives a damn about how you make it, but where is it made? And that's the biggest problem that I think English whiskey is gonna face. Now, another thing that we've got to do in this video is give a big shout out to the, to the Bimba uh, Appreciation Society on Facebook for their outstanding love that they showed and also for some of their, uh, as you say, pretty snide comments. But I think in a roundabout way, I mean, this is my favorite comment. We'll put some of the other comments up on screen, but someone wrote, quite a senior admin person in the group, uh, wrote a critique of our, of our video, and they put a review of loads of little parts that aren't really connected. The design, the marketing, international visitors that aren't into whiskey, terroir, location of the distillery, English whiskey, English whiskey regulations, investment, and no tasting in sight. And you know what? We couldn't have thought of a better description of this, this channel in a way, really, because that's what we're all about on here. We're not about whiskey tasting. We know there's lots more people with a better palate than me. I'm not into whiskey tasting. Well, I am into whiskey tasting, but I'm not into whiskey tasting on YouTube. And also we are all about pulling the little things together that make up the big picture. Because I feel like if people believe that whiskey in 2021 is just for drinking, then it's the most one-dimensional view of the industry that there ever has been. And it, you're naive to think that that's what these distilleries think, because let's face it, the majority of us in the UK are raging capitalists. Bimba, 
they're raging capitalists. They want money. They're a business. They're there to generate money. Yes, they're doing it through love of a, and a product of a passion that they want, but they need to get sales. Why have they gone into collaboration with Transport for London? Why have they gone into making such a beautiful bottle? Why didn't they just put a label on it that said Bimba and the cast details? Because you want to get sales. And how do you get sales? The majority, not the majority, a large portion of whiskey buyers in, the, in, this, in, in this country have got you know, no real concern in drinking expensive or relatively expensive releases like this. They're there to collect these things in the same way that like your Rolex collector doesn't buy a 6263 Daytona because of how well it keeps time. There's more to it than that. And these distilleries, Bimber especially, have shown it in this release, that there's more to it than just selling the whiskey and just putting it out there because it's the collectors that are causing maybe not in this instance you know we don't know that's the case but in a lot of instances you know you look at the latest springbank local barley or the latest yamazaki release people buy them and they flip buy and flip buy and flip but without those collectors buying them on the release to flip you know you, you go back five years ago these these releases didn't sell out you know a lot of releases didn't sell out in the first couple of weeks of them being live and yet you look at the springbank local barley the whole supplies were decimated within a few minutes of the sort of site going live so there is more to whiskey than just drinking it and, and that's what we're trying to expose on this channel and yeah we don't do tastings on this channel but you know what we are all about giving access to bottles of whiskey. So we don't want to be, oh, there's your NF, there's your QR code. You know, we don't just want to keep these bottles in the realm of collectors to a certain extent because there is a community of whiskey drinkers that are out there, myself included, but it's not my position on this channel to go about reviewing them. Ooh. but it's jolly nice. And you know what? Instead of listening to me waffle on about it review, and we're gonna send this bottle off to a load of other reviewers, as we always do with these bottles on this channel. I think Moa, the Swedish whiskey girl, is gonna be the first person to review this. Whiskey Wednesday, No Nonsense Whiskey, loads of other Instagrammers and people are gonna get a chance to try this bottle because again, who's opening and sharing these in, in, in that sort of way? And in this video, we're gonna give someone in the comments the chance to win a dram from this bottle. So if you wanna win a 30 mil dram from this bottle, just put in the comments what you would like to see more of on this channel. Is it sort of in-depth reviews on bottles and the histories? Is it the histories of distilleries? Do you want more information about cask investment or bottle investment? Just put your answers in the comment section below and we'll draw a winner at random. So there we have it. It's our second video on the Bimber Spirit of the Underground series. And yeah, I still think it's a really good release. The auction numbers are looking good. They probably won't stay as good as they are in the long term. Most Bimber releases don't. But I think this one's got slightly more about it. And if you're looking to buy any whiskey or you're looking to collect whiskey, make sure you head over to our website where we've got loads of in-depth guides. And if you're looking to sell your bottles as well, make sure you get in touch because we can help you through auctions and private sales. And we can also list your bottles on our shop.